Hello, this is MakerJ11, and I'm back from Maker Fair from today. And sadly, guys, I didn't make any videos at Maker Fair today. Um, I was just too busy uh, being at my first Maker Fair ever, and um, really enjoying talking to people that came to my booth and looked at my Sterling engine and everything. Pretty much a constant stream of people coming to my booth, so it was pretty awesome. So I really didn't have any chance to actually leave my booth or make any videos, so... Uh, but uh, I'll try tomorrow, hopefully, well, partially hopefully I'll get a break at, well, hopefully sometime I'll get a break and um, break in the people coming to my uh, booth to look at my stuff and I'll be able to uh, make some videos at some other booths and stuff because there's some pretty cool stuff there. Um, but there was actually somebody else who had Sterling Engines, at least that's what people were telling me. Um, so, yeah, um, so I just got back, well, a little bit ago. And um, here's my Sterling engine. So pretty much everything worked pretty much the whole day. So I had my uh, internal combustion engine, which did give me trouble at one point, but I got it working again. Um, and then, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, so I actually took it apart to replace the, um, the piston O-ring at one point during the day, because that's just a, um, a, a rubber O-ring and it wears out after maybe about an hour of running. So about halfway through the day, it was losing compression. It wasn't working anymore, so I took it all apart. And um, the spring for the check valve, the intake check valve, uh, got fell on the floor and I stepped on it. So it got crushed and I didn't have a spring to replace it with. So I had to improvise by just bending it back into sort of a shape. It's really gnarly looking right now. But um, So I have some new, new springs I'm bringing with me tomorrow. But um, I did get it working again, but it took a while. So, um, and then basically my steam engine worked great all day long. Um, my air-cooled Sterling engine worked great. This one worked great all day. It was running LEDs the whole day. And, um, but it seems like the last, like, half hour, about, uh, yeah, about half hour before Maker Fair ended today, it's, um, I think the piston, or the, the displacer, uh, basically either it popped apart or I don't know what happened I guess we're gonna find out what it looks like inside there but it doesn't go down anymore all the way it jams up there and then uh, also at the top of the stroke it jams up so I think either the cans popped apart or the bottom of the aluminum can in the bottom bulged out so instead of being uh, concave on the bottom of the can. It's just convex now, I think. So something like that. So I gotta take it apart and see what's wrong with it. But it ran all day great, and then last half hour it just decided to fart out on me. You can see the, uh, there's a little bit more slop in the, the push rod there. So it's wearing out a little bit, but it's not too bad. I think it should be okay. So that's good. But, um, we'll have to I'm going to take it apart here and see. Hopefully it's something I can fix real quick, but I kind of doubt it. Well, exactly what I thought happened to it happened to it. The can inverted from the pressure. So basically, at the end there, I adjusted the burner a little bit um, because it had kept going out. And um, so I must have adjusted a little bit too high and the temperature got too high. And um, inside the can here, it... The pressure built so much that it just popped it out. And this happened on one of my other engines as well. So, uh, <laughs> yep, one of the earlier versions. So, it's a flaw, I guess. Um, I guess one way to solve it is to poke a little hole in here. Um, but I think the way I'm going to solve it, well, this is actually what my dad suggested. Um, because I'm in a pinch here, I need to get this ready for tomorrow, and I can't really make a new one of these. Because, number one, I don't have any more of these beer cans. Um, because I don't drink beer. And I... Yeah, so I collected these from somebody else's, got these from somebody else's friend, but, um, actually family member. Um, but anyways, yeah, so, uh, can't really get new beer cans, the same as these, and, um, so really the only way to do is make this one work. Um, so I thought originally to just try to kink this back in, but my dad had this suggestion, why not kink the, uh, the displacer chamber out? So that's what I did, and it's clearing it now, so that's great, so thanks, Dad. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so at first I was like, really? Kink that out? Eh, why not? I mean, he's an engineer, too, so, I mean, he knows what he's talking about. To a certain extent, I mean, he's a materials, so a little different, but still. Um, it worked, hey. I mean, it seems like it's gonna, 
it doesn't uh, hit it anymore, so that's good. So it just clears it just enough. So that's awesome. So that was an easy fix. Um, so now it should be back in business for tomorrow at Maker Fair all day. And um, yeah, so the does have a little bit of wiggle room there, but I think it should be okay because it was running fine before. And uh, just put some oil on there and it seems to work just fine. But yeah, this is my new displacer. I was using a um, stainless steel, or I mean, sorry, a steel wool displacer before, but um, I decided to try, go back to the can method and try that again. And I think it's actually working quite well, except for minus the uh, bulge there. And I actually, I was surprised that it must have not really gotten that hot because the cans aren't even discolored. The paint isn't burned off of them. So it must have not gotten very hot at Maker Faire. I thought I was overheating it. And it was doing quite well. It was running very well. It was running a bunch of LEDs all day long. All day long. And it, it's the only, this is the only problem I had at the very end. Both my Sterling engines were very reliable. They ran all day long. The only problems I had were the burner and then this at the very end. So... Yeah, my other one, my air-cooled engine that I've, that's my, like, fourth-generation engine, that one's gonna run tomorrow, too, so, hopefully. Um, at least that's the idea. We'll see how that goes. But, um, I mean, they're reliable as long as you don't really take them out of your, like, design how So you design them to a certain, I mean, not really design them, but the materials you use are designed for a certain temperature range. So, I mean, as long as you don't take them out of that temperature range and operation, um, it's pretty reliable. So, like, that, that engine, I just had a little flame under it all day long, and it ran just fine. It didn't wear out. It's working great. I mean, this one probably, it would have kept running tomorrow, too, if I uh, wouldn't have overheated a little bit. But, yeah, so, pretty cool. Um, so, my one concern with poking a hole in this, so that this doesn't happen again, is that the sides will start kinking in and out, but I'm not sure if that's a problem or not. I Maybe I'll try that on another engine. I don't really want to try that on this engine yet because I need to uh, take it to America Fair tomorrow and I don't want it to fail again. So I'm going to leave it like this and this should be able to withstand that pressure a lot better and hopefully won't have the same failure. Well, it can't really fail anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's already failed. So worst case scenario is that this totally falls apart tomorrow, but it's holding together very well so far. It's the JB Weld isn't discolored or anything, so I think the only failure point I see for tomorrow is that the um, gland here um, gets too big and it starts leaking too much air. <clears throat> Which, if that happened, all I'd really have to do is either put a little bit of grease on there instead of oil, or I could um, turn up the temperature a little bit. Um, but really, I shouldn't have a problem with that, so yeah, um, I'll try to get you guys some videos tomorrow. And well, actually, let's test this out real quick here, make sure it's going to work for tomorrow. Alright, now for a real quick run of it, just to make sure it's going to work. I don't even have water in the water jacket, so I don't want to run it very long. Just uh, like 30 seconds, just to make sure it's going to try. So, heat it up with the blowtorch here a little bit. And we'll see if it's going to give us promising results here. Because I don't want to get to Maker Fair tomorrow and it doesn't work at all. That would really stink. Should be enough heat. Let's see if it's gonna work here. I think we need more heat on there. Need to get the heat all up in the round in there. All right, let's try it now. Oops. Oh yeah, I think that's promising. It's trying a little bit. Got to get a lot more heat on there, I guess. And also, get the water in the water jacket. Yeah, that's promising. I'll take that. So, uh, yep. Alright, so, tomorrow at Maker Fair, I'll try to make some videos of my, at least my booth. Try to make some of some other cool stuff, so, yep. Oh yeah, and here's my spring collection for, uh, gotta bring this so that I can repair my internal combustion engine because I stepped on the spring. So, I think I should be able to find a spring in here somewhere, or at least make one, or, like, just trim one off, but, yeah, I've got a big collection. That's, like, a lifetime supply, pretty much. Um, just been collecting those over the years. 
so it should be good. Spot it, guys. Thanks for watching, and keep exploring.